I've got to tell you, I'm nervous, I'm excited. It's a big deal, now let me explain why. So my introduction to McLaren as a brand, officially and properly, was when I had my first experience in the McLaren 675LT. Notice, we can thread it with the cross of the wrists. What? Now for those of you who have watched that video, it was out in Tenerife and I approached that car with no expectations at all. I was given the keys at the last minute, I jumped in it and what transpired was my brain being warped. I literally put my money where my mouth is and I just had to hunt down a 675 LT. Now we are a little over seven months later and here I am driving the successor to the 650S. It's important to say that because despite the specs of this car on paper, it, it outdoes the LT in pretty much every area. It's not designed to replace that car. The LT is a more focused, raw driver's car. But it's really hard to ignore it because when you're in this thing, well, let me just give you a bit of this. Sweet Lord! I, do, I don't know how they do it. Every time I get in a car and I'm like, how much dip? Uh, let me just try that again. <laughs> oh God, I've got to back off. I've got to back off. This is a joke. Whew. Oh, it's unbelievable. The poke that this thing has is crazy. So, 720S, 720 stands for 720 PS in horsepower, that's 710 horsepower. We have an upsized engine. We've gone up from the 3.8 liter to a four liter twin scroll turbocharged engine. Oh, oh, oh. What? By the grace of physics, how do you do that? I swear to you, I can almost feel my diaphragm compressing against the seat when I accelerate in this thing. Just, 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 just check this out. Oh! If this thing had wings, we would fly! <laughs> the ridiculous thing is that this is designed not to replace the LT, and it is a step on. Oh, the gear shifts as well are absolutely rapid. Mother! Oh. oh, and it pops and cracks. One thing to note, the 720 that I'm driving has not been fitted with the optional sports exhaust system. Now, I've got to, I've got to say, when you plant your right foot, it's such an attack on the senses. Good God! i got to slow it down. <laughs> Stunt pilots and air racers, they use breathing techniques in order to help them not pass out under G-forces. I can't help but think those techniques wouldn't go amiss right now. to get too carried it away in something this powerful in an environment you're not too familiar with. <laughs> what possessed you to make something so ridiculously powerful? As I was saying, this car doesn't have the optional sports exhaust system, but to be frank right now, the power of it is taking my concentration so much, I don't think I can think about anything else other than where I'm going and where I'm braking. Which brings me round to the brakes. The brakes. For all of its straight line glory, you've gotta have something to back up that power. These brakes, now forgive me McLaren if I'm wrong, but I think I read somewhere that the brakes on this are actually smaller than on the LT, yet they pack a lot more punch. Pack a lot more punch? 
I need a hands device for my kidneys to hold them in place. That's just ridiculous. Like you anchor on and I can, f I feel my eyeballs get thrown to the front of my skull and compressed to my face upon braking. It has got that much power and you need it. Because in third gear right now, there goes the kidneys, there goes the eyeballs. Kidneys, eyeballs, oh Lord. <laughs> And so, before you know it, you're doing speeds that are, quite simply, ungodly. But thankfully, these brakes are such that it is like throwing an anchor out onto the tarmac. It just sheds off so much speed. And so, yes, you've got all this fantastic power and vast, vast torque. But you're not overly afraid. I have driven cars in the past where the focus has been on all the go and no slow. And I know I'm putting a lot of time and effort into discussing the characteristics of these brakes. By God, are they impressive. Now, normally I'm all about taking you along for the driving experience, but I feel because this car is such a tech tour de force that it would be wrong of me to neglect some of the standout features. This screen has to be number one. It has this folding retractable cluster. Two reasons for that. When you put it into track mode, it folds away like so. I mean, how sci-fi is that? That in itself is adding a little drama. The idea behind that is when you're on track or in track mode, you don't need to be distracted with the likes of sat-nav and radio and things like that. You just want to know what gear you're in and how fast you're going and what revs you're in. So this folds away. It's got a beautiful little screen on top of the uh, main cluster unit. So when it folds away, you're presented with this very simple, very straightforward, what I would say is back to driving basics interface. And its second purpose by folding it away is also giving you a little bit more visibility on the road. And if you want to be uh, all James Bond and bring it back, there's a simple click of one button and behold, the massive LCD screen that looks like I'm piloting a fighter jet. Okay, let's talk aesthetics, shall we? Now, I know the way something looks is often typically very subjective and personal. I'm gonna go out and say that, as a whole, this thing is is pretty damn good looking. Uh, now, let's cover off the controversial points first. The light sockets. Now, it's, it's great because it's unlike anything I've ever seen. It really makes this car unique and stand out, but, you know, in typical McLaren style, everything has a purpose. It's not just there for aesthetics sake. T to the degree that those eye sockets or those light sockets are inverted and hollow to allow air through. Directly behind the LED clusters sit little radiators. And it's there to allow air to flow through those lights and cool components of the car. So while it looks cool, and I actually think it looks great, it's the most controversial part of the car. What I will say is that on photographs, it really doesn't do it justice. You have to see the architecture of these headlights for it all to sort of click and make sense. But I fully agree on photographs, it does look a bit weird. But sculpturally, as a whole, th this thing's a work of art. The doors are magnificent. When you open them, the, you can see through them, they're like hollow. The amount of, of sort of air channeling and aerodynamic sculpture that's gone on with this car is truly breathtaking. And as a result, the components of it are beautiful. The rear has such a fabulous stance and there's just a lot of flowing movements of well, basically practical aerodynamics that, as they say, form follows function. And this thing must be incredibly functional because its form is fabulous. And let's talk about the inside. Well, this feels like I'm taking a look at a prototype that's not out for the next three years. It is a complete leap arm. And switch gear, every touch point, everything that you interact with has been machined out of a beautiful material. 
be it the tips on the air vents, the switch gear, everything's lovely. But the gear shifts, now I was told that there's been quite a significant improvement on shift time, even, wow, even uh, versus the LT, which by my experience, is practically seamless. Listen to it. I don't know where you go from there. I don't. I don't know. It's. I tell you what else is phenomenal. It's just how much pull there is at the top end. The top end, like turbo cars, they genuinely top out when you get up higher up the rev band. But this. Oh. Okay. So we've come into some traffic. I'm gonna dial this down to sport and try my best to conclude. Look, when you really dial it down, that screen comes back up. It's a vast array of awesomeness. So how do I conclude this car? It's not easy, and I'll tell you why. Good Lord! That's why it's not easy. What I just did was not available to the realms of mortals a few years ago. You had to be in hypercar territory to get that kind of punch. However, for all of its punch and accelerative drama, I'm still not getting the hair standing up on the back of my neck. And what this brings me round to is, this is probably the best all round daily driver supercar you can buy. Now, I'm gonna put that out there, it sounds pretty bold, but I'm pretty confident in saying as a complete package, it's probably the best car you can buy. Sounds amazing, right? Well, it is, but if you're after that weekend car, the car that's really gonna give you goosebumps and sound fantastic, this is not that car. It does not try and bite you. And if you're not looking for that in a supercar experience, then I don't think you can beat this thing. It is beyond unreal how capable, and its breadth of ability is so wide, it's hard to decipher where the GT car ends and the hypercar begins. It really does blur the lines between something that a few years ago I don't think you would have been able to develop. But having said that, if you want an attack on your senses, if you want a visceral beast to eat your nervous system upon depressing the throttle, this, in its current state, don't forget this doesn't have the sports exhaust on it, isn't delivering that experience. We gotta remember, there's probably one day gonna be an LT version of this car, so you've gotta cut these guys a bit of slack and say they've gotta leave room for potential improvement down the line. But the way it stands, you could drive this thing every single day, do your shopping, spank a Veyron on the way home, and then take the kid to football while visiting grandma. It, its ability is that vast. And for that, you have to applaud these guys because the supercar market right now is well saturated with cars that have a quite a broad breadth of ability, but not with the performance of this and the practicality of this. It is truly game changing. As always guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.